Well, g'day curd nerds, and welcome to another cheese taste test. This one is Gouda. So this is the Gouda I made with the Louder mold. Now, you can see some funny things have happened to it, and that is it's got a crack across the top, and it's got a crack across the bottom. Not ideal, I think we've got a case of late blowing, uh, which is caused by a thing called butyric acid, which is present in the milk. Uh, this sometimes happens when cows are fed silage. Now it's winter here in Australia, so, and I made it uh, six, when did I make it? This was ready 11th of June, it's now the 20 something, so it's about eight weeks old, two months. So yeah, could have been affected. There is a way around, uh, there's a way to prevent late blowing, and that's called using a stuff called Lysolac, uh, which is an egg white derivative and you simply add a minute amount to your milk and it prevents this sort of thing from happening. It's commonly used in the cheese making industry to prevent fissures and flaws and, and a lot of CO2 development. So, <clears throat> I'm comfortable with what's happened. Let's see, it should, uh, and it shouldn't have affected the taste um, at all, but let's see if I can get into it without making too much of a mess. So. Like I said, 11th was when it was um, when it was due to be um, uh, sampled. So we'll get rid of that. And somehow get into the wax. Should be able to get it without wrecking the cheese. Now where the fissures have happened and it's puffed up, it's really tight against the wax, so. But it's still got that nice shape uh, that was given to it by the louder mold was quite cool. We're going to have a lot of wax bits here. Good thing about this cheese wax is that you can reuse it. Um, I'll simply clean this off with uh, the wax that is with warm soapy water uh, and then I'll put it back in my waxing container and they won't have any issues at all. Oh, let's get this off. It could be a 10 minute video of just taking wax off cheese. <laughs> anyway, let's. Good thing is the cheese is not sticking to the wax yet. It's coming apart okay, and there's no mold under it. And the other good thing about this so far, there's no moisture under it either. Now, as far as the smell goes, it smells very cheesy, which is a good thing. Right, we got to the bottom. Now I did put um, probably three or four layers of wax. Oh, it's kind of stuck to where the um, where that ridge in the mould was. All right, come on, come off. You can do it. Come on, Gouda, you can do it. Hey, there we go. So, right, let's get any stray bits off. Don't want no wax in my cheese. Some on the top there. Bit there, come on, you can come off, my baby. Right. It's always one piece, isn't there? It's always like there's that one person at Christmas or Thanksgiving. <laughs> right, come on. There we go, a little bit more. Righty-o. So let's get all this wax on here, off of the tasting plate. I'm cutting board. Put that there. Get that out of the way. All right, so just a quick shot there. We can see the big fissure on the top. Uh, fissure on the bottom, so I expect there to be some 
well, CO2 eye development. Let's cut across the fishes. But before we do, let's have a smell. Mmm. Smells good. It smells good. So there's no off smells or anything like that. So that's not a big problem. Now, I normally I would use the wire cutter, but I wasn't sure. So I'm just going to use the sharpest knife. One of the sharpest knives I've got. No, there's no gas release when I did this. All right, yeah. So definitely a case of late blown cheese. Now it doesn't affect the flavor at all, which is a good thing. So there we go there. It's a nice close up, so I'll keep that there. And the other half kind of looks like a bit of a Swiss. So the good thing is you can tell whether it's gas development with a cheese and not mechanical holes. Uh, if you look at the eyes, I don't know if we can see it there. If you look at the eyes, then you can see that they're actually shiny. So if the eyes are shiny, that means the ga gas has made tho those eyes. If they look dull and the same colour as the rest of the cheese, then it's basically a mechanical issue. So it's kind of got a fissure slant going through the middle. I don't know if you can see it there. There we go. So going through the middle, that's what's caused this bulge as you can see there. So, very funky. Anyway, so let's just put that bit there. Stay. There we go. And we're going to cut it in quarters. Oh, there we go. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, it's all good. All good. I'll put that on the table. The table's clean. And let's get another quarter of this one. So far as, as far as I'm concerned, it's not a failure. It's just get this gas production. All right, let's cut a bit. I don't want to cut my finger off, but let's see if we can get a slice. I don't reckon it too much. Oh, hey, there we go. All righty, nice big wedge of gouda. I'll cut that there. So it's got a nice bit of rind development, which is good. And you can just see a different yellowing discolorment there, which is, you know, fine by me. Um, smells beautiful, absolutely does. And let's let's have a taste, shall we? Oh, there's a bit of wax there. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> My pants, as you do. Mmm. That's it. That's the one. Beautiful, mild, subtle flavour. It's been salted properly. Yep, no problems with the salting. Mmm, that's delicious. Beautiful. Mmm. That's nice. What's it like on a cracker? Even better, more texture, really good. I think Kim's gonna really like this one because um, she does love a good gouda. Normally it doesn't have all this eye development, of course, but hey, um, it's delicious nonetheless. That's lovely, really nice. Nothing quite like a washed curd cheese. Um, and Gouda certainly is in that family of, of Dutch cheeses that wash the curd to lower the acidity. No hint of acidity whatsoever uh, in this cheese. It's just smooth, creamy, and absolutely delicious. So nice. That's really, really good. Now, nah, pleased with that. Now, it was ripened at 13 degrees Celsius for um, 
uh, eight weeks. I could have tried it at, at six. It wasn't as puffy because I was turning it once a week. Um, so may have found less eye development at six weeks, but probably the flavour wouldn't be as nice and creamy as it is. There's no uh, nuttiness that you would get with, say, a Swiss cheese that has eye development like this because I didn't add in any propionic shimani, which is a gas producing and, and flavor uh, producing bacteria, which causes the nuttiness in those Swiss style cheeses. But nice, creamy, subtle, beautiful cheese. Um, absolutely rate this. Now I'm trying to get my hands on some Lysolac. Like I said, it's that egg white derivative to prevent this, add it to the milk to start with. And that's, that stops the the eye formation, so you get a nice, clean, smooth paste uh, with your gouda. Now I found that not only have previous gouders done this as well, so have pretty, uh, previous Edoms that I've made, and I've had I've come up with the same sort of result. Um, but I've also made gouders without any eye development or tiny little eyes, um, and randomly through the cheese, and it's tasted exactly the same. So, look, I would say this is a success. Certainly not disappointed. Um, glad I waxed it, though. Um, and, and so it could expand. The crack could expand. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, certainly didn't get any, um, uh, any mold growth during that crack time. That crack's been there for about a week. Uh, so no big deal. And, uh, yeah, I'm really glad how it turned out. Anyway, so that's a Gouda taste test. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you would like to make Gouda for yourself, we've got all the supplies over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Um, this cheese is in the family of uh, washed curd cheeses, which I've mentioned, uh, and are, um, it can be aged as little as six weeks or can be aged up for over a year. And with, with a year with Gouda, without these eyes, of course, um, you tend to get um, uh, tyrosine crystals, which are that crystal that crunches when you eat the cheese. Uh, you get that with this style of cheese at about 12 months. So absolutely delicious. Um, do yourself a favour, give it a go, uh, give it a try. If you can also find some lysolac, then maybe that'll prevent some of this um, late blowing. And there's no problems with a late blowing cheese. It's just cosmetic. That's all it is. Flavour is perfect not infected or anything like that, as some people may think. But no, delicious cheese. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.